Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I have another video for you today from Honeybee Stamps. I am using the Quilted A2 cover plate. I am using the Love You Bunches Stamps and Dies and then the uh, Bitty Buzzwords. I think this one is the Be Mine. Um, so before we get into everything that we're going to be doing, just super quickly, uh, Honeybee Stamps is having a spring cleaning sale this weekend. It's 15% off. There's no code needed. It takes the money off as soon as you put it in your cart. Um, and that is good through, I think it's like 11.59 p.m. on April 10th, 2022. So as you can see here, I have some Karen Brush Pro markers. I've heard lots of good things about them. I really wanted to try Whenever I get a new product, I do like to swatch them so that I can see what the colors look like before I start coloring. That's what you see me doing here. Um, I'm just drawing a line and then blending them out. Uh, a couple of things to note. These are probably most comparable to like Zig Clean Color markers. Uh, they have really bright, vivid colors. Uh, they love water. Um, they move really, really well. I'm using... Um, uh, what is it? Canson Montevall watercolor paper. Um, and I really like them. I thought they moved really well. I like a brighter color. Um, it can be challenging to get more realistic. I bought two sets. I bought the um, basic and then I bought the skin tones. So the basic is the one you see us swatching now and the skin tones are on the right hand side. Um, and this just helps me kind of figure out what kind of color palette I'm working with was very, very interested to see how the red did because I know with my Zig Clean Color Marker, my red blends out pretty pink. Um, I was very happy with kind of how the red blended out here. It stayed pretty true to color. Um, and so I thought that was pretty impressive. Um, and all, I mean, all of them really for the most part, I was happy with the colors. For the skin tones, there was a lot of variety in there, and I figured with these two sets, I could pretty much color anything that I wanted to color that was, you know, people or animals or flowers or, you know, whatever. I, I was going to have a pretty good base to go with. As far as price point goes, um, I bought mine from Dick Blick, and I get quite a bit of my coloring supplies from there. They have really good prices. So a 12-pack of these was... Um, $23.79 for the 12 markers. You can buy individual markers um, for $3 a piece. To put that into perspective, the Zig Clean Color markers are um, like $33.50 for a 12 pack, but each individual marker is $278 um, over there. And obviously that's not the only place to carry them, but just to kind of give you an idea, like ballpark price wise. Um, so I went ahead and stamped down the bouquet from Love You Bunches, just a rose bouquet, got a couple of different flowers um, in there, a couple of different leaves, and I thought, well, this will be a good one to try it out on. Um, and surprisingly, what I ended up doing was actually using the skin tones to color my flower. Um, I really liked the peachy pinks at the top, and so I went with those. Um, I did what I normally do, like my plan of attack was pretty much the same as I would do with any of my watercolors. I laid it down where I wanted it to be the darkest and then I used a very little bit of water on my um, paintbrush. Now I have been kind of doing this technique for long enough that I know how much water I need to pick up. That comes with practice. If you are still very new to watercoloring, I would recommend um, when you're sitting down to watercolor something that you keep a paper towel on hand um, and then before you take your paintbrush to the paper after you've rinsed it off um, blot the bottom like the base of the bristles not the top you want moisture to be there but the base of the bristles and that way you can control the water much easier uh, as you can see they blended out beautifully it's a super pretty color um, I wanted to see how they did with kind of layering more colors, um, blending different colors together because you guys know I like my color variation. Um, and then I wanted to see also how they lifted up. Uh, I didn't really have, shockingly, I didn't have any boo-boos during the coloring in order to practice that. So I just did it on a scrap piece. You'll see that at the end of the coloring. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, I was pretty, I was pretty happy with them. I, here I'm mixing in a little bit more of a peach color and you can see on my um, little like swatch sheet, I did end up um, kind of labeling them. Not so much for the basic colors, that's pretty evident, like they match their caps fairly well, but for the skin tones, because they're all kind of close together, um, I wanted to make sure I was picking up the one that I wanted to be picking up. So here I've used the, um, I think this is the um, Soft Peach, I used Soft Peach 1, and the darker color is um, Pale Pink, uh, which I think is kind of funny because it's the darkest one, but, um, well, I've, in this set anyway, the darkest pink. Um, but yeah, so mixing them together, I didn't have any issues. There were some areas where I wanted it to be darker. I wanted more color variation. And while it was still wet, I just went in with the tip of the um, brush marker. And these aren't brush like Zig Clean Color Markers are brush. They are um, more like a Copic nib. Um, they're maybe a little bit less flexible. Um, they are uh, they are very wet like there's a lot of ink that's coming out of them the only thing that I did not try and I think maybe I will next time um, I tried to see um, like picking up the color from my watercolor media mat like scribbling it down on there and picking it up and that did work well for this um, but I did not try taking my paintbrush directly to the nib um, and I saw somebody else do that and that seemed to work pretty well here you can see with this middle rose there's a quite a large area to cover with the watercolor it blended out really smooth um, there wasn't any issues as far as um, you know not getting good coverage or and I even went back in and put like the pink in over the peach and just kind of blended that back out and really loved the result so so far so good on these bad boys um, it's funny because looking at the one that's the bottom right one, it's so, like every time I look at it, um, it makes me think of the stained glass rose from Beauty and the Beast. You know, in the beginning when they're like telling the story and it's all in stained glass, that bottom right rose, is that's what that looks like to me. And I can't stop thinking about it every time I look at it. Um, and uh, me and Miss Caitlin watched that uh, recently. We've been on a um, on a Disney movie kick. Um, me and her, uh, Eric and Peanut, are like, oh my gosh, another Disney movie. But she likes them, and so do I. So, you know, that's what we're doing. That's how we're spending our time, when it's just me and her. Otherwise, we have to watch, like, Coco Melon. Um, though I have kind of got her to the point where she'll be a little bit entertained by Sophia the First because at least that has a storyline. Coco Melon's really just, ugh, the songs is too much. Um, for this last rose, I kind of wanted to see what would happen if I just went in there all willy-nilly, you know, because when you're watercoloring, you're not supposed to work in two spots that are next to each other because the colors all run together. Um, you're, you know, there's certain like kind of tricks and tools that you use if you're trying to have a lot of control over where the color goes. Here I just wanted to see what would happen if I just put a bunch of color down and then just kind of let it do its thing. Uh, it was still really pretty. I'm not going to lie to you. It was still um, super cute. I didn't have, it wasn't all one note, which was good, um, but I also didn't have a lot of shadows, obviously, because I didn't place them. Um, so once I've done this part, just because I wanted to see how it would react, I am going to go back in with a darker pink and give myself a couple of little shadows so that this rose doesn't look like it has no dimension while the other ones look like they have some dimension. I didn't use super dark colors um, as far as the shadows went, and I can see how that would maybe be problematic for more realistic um, watercoloring with just these sets. Like I said, there's multiple other sets and there might be other ones that strike your fancy. I, I thought that I could just see what I would do with these two. Um, and then if I totally fall in love with them, maybe I would look at getting more. But um, you'll see when we do the leaves, uh, there's a little trick that I use to maybe tone down the brightness. 
So these other flowers that are in the bouquet, I wanted to add in a little bit of blue. For real, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm kind of missing a lighter bright blue. There's a darker bright blue and that's what I'm using here, but there isn't really a lighter one in this set. Um, and I'm a little bit missing that. So I'm if I just keep these two sets, I would probably venture out to purchasing a lighter blue just as a single marker, but the color itself is very pretty. Um, I wanted it to, to be a little bit more uh, violet on the blue violet side, and so I just went in and added um, just like a dot of the violet and blended that out. In some cases, it was it was too much, um, which is so funny because I really did just like put a dot at the base. In some cases, the violet kind of took over. In other cases, it was still okay. Once um, this part was done, which it was good, I guess, to see how many like colors you could layer um, to see how they would look. And like after I put down the violet and I realized it was too much, I did go back in with the blue and I didn't have any issues blending that out again. And once it dried, it is definitely more blue violet on the card, even though it looks more pinkish purple um, when it's wet. So I'm not, I mean, watercolor always looks different wet to dry. Um, so, you know, like I said, it just, it, it looks a little bit different. So if you're doing watercoloring uh, with these or any other color, you know, any other type of watercoloring medium, like remember, it's going to look different when it dries. The greens. I have the same problem with the greens and the Zigclean color markers. They're so bright. It's almost impossible to get any sort of depth or dimension from them. I mixed my like yellow green with a little bit more yellow um, because I do like that color variation, but they were like neon. <laughs> it was so bright. Um, but I do have a trick for how I kind of bring those back down to earth and that is why like when we talk about in the videos when we talk about color theory and things like that um that it's important to know those things it's not like it's certainly not life or death but if there if you want more control over your coloring there are certain things that would be helpful to you in in learning so that you know how to fix it if you don't like it now, if you're just like, Kelly, I don't care if my greens are neon, I just want to sit down and paint in color, that's totally cool. You do you, boo. But if you want to be able to tame the color a little bit, so I know looking at this that on the color wheel, green's complementary color is red. So when I picked a brown, I didn't go straight red, um... I picked a brown that was more green based, or I'm sorry, more red based, so that when I put it over the green, it doesn't change the fact that it's green. It just tones it down enough, like brings down that brightness, because I'm using its complementary color. And when you put complementary colors together, they make brown. So, I chose one that had a bit more of a red base just to kind of knock it back a little. And again, you can totally see that much better once it dries down. For the other part of the leaves and stems, I chose to use the teal just to kind of break it up and have a little bit of um, difference. But to keep some continuity, I did use the yellow with the teal as well. I didn't put them over each other because I didn't want to contaminate my nibs but I did put them next to each other and then just kind of let them do their thing. Um, they were a little light, so I ended up going back in with more teal to kind of get it to the depth that I wanted it to be. Um, but ultimately, I was really happy with these. I can totally see myself using them again. Um, I just, I, I think it's fun to kind of try new products, but because um, I am a little, <laughs> I am a little bit more on the frugal side. I wait, um, when something new comes along, I wait a little while before I snatch it up, um, just to kind of see what other people are doing with them or what other people's projects or opinions are before I invest my own money or time into them. So I hope this helps you if you've been on the fence with them about making a decision. If you have zinc, um, zig clean color markers, uh, you may not even 
you know, be interested in, in switching that up. The, the nib for the Zigling color markers is definitely more brush, where this is more like um, the blending tip for like a Copic, um, which these are supposed to be great for calligraphy if you're into that as well. Um, like a Christina Warner who um, decorates her envelopes and stuff, which are totally beautiful. And I always know when there's like a Christina card is in my mailbox because I can spot that handwriting a mile away. Here is that test I was telling you about where I wanted to see if the color would lift up. So I used a light color, I used a darker cool color, and then I used a red because the reds are always notorious for having trouble lifting. I put some water on top of it and then I blotted them up. The light color came up pretty much in the first attempt. Um, the purple and the red. I could not get completely up and I did intentionally pick the hardest colors. Um, you know, something super dark and, and the reds, the reds are, <laughs> the reds are notorious. Um, but I will say that I got them, you know, after going over them three or four times that I got them to the point where if I was putting another color over them, I don't really feel like you'd see it. And that's pretty comparable to most other things on the market. I'm outlining just like I usually do. Um, it is a little bit more challenging on watercolor paper to kind of get a clean uh, stamped image because the paper is textured. Um, but this one was, was fairly good. The issue that I have is that I like a bold black outline. That's just me. Um, this certainly isn't necessary. Several people have asked me like, why do you don't re-stamp them in your Misty? And I've had one or two little boo-boos where um, I've colored a whole piece and then went to stamp over it and it wasn't perfectly lined up and that was enough to turn me off from trying it again. I am going to tell you, you guys know that I don't start over. We're about to have a major card snafu. It's coming. It's happening. Just wait for it. So I'm putting my dies in place. I love this little um, quilted A2 size. I do end up trimming it down because I felt like this card needed like a little white border. Um, so I did end up trimming it down, but as far as um, die cutting it, that was pretty straightforward. I just lined up my my card and, you know, taped it in place. I know I'm going to cut through the um, back of it, like the back of the tape, but it's fine. It'll hold it in place long enough for me to get the impression I'm looking for. And then I'm cutting out the Adore You in black and white. So here, I'm going through and just removing my dies. Now, I keep my purple tape. It's None of it is like brand new purple tape. It's all stuck to the side of my desk and I just use it as needed. Um, so I'm going through and pulling them off, um, you know, just like I normally do, just like any other card. And then what happens is here, when I got to my watercolor piece, I went to pull the tape off and it ripped. I cannot tell you the words that I said. It ripped the image in both places. So here I'm like trying to peel it up. It ripped it in the, like where it was sealed at the bottom and it ripped it where it was sealed at the top. So now like now I can't even pull it from another angle to try to reduce the ripping because I couldn't get in there um, because of the tape. So I ended up having to cut it in half so I could kind of see what I could do to peel it away. Um, I was able to keep most of it intact. It just was not flat anymore. Like it had pulled it up for the um, stems portion of it. I wasn't quite as lucky. It did pull quite a bit of it up. You'll be able to see that white spot, um, but I'm not starting over. I'm going to fix that. That's what's happening. So first things first, the pieces, parts that I was able to salvage that are just pulled up. I'm just going to put in like one little dot of glue and I'm going to smooth it back down. Nobody will ever be able to tell that it was torn except for me and you because we've watched this video. Um, so I smoothed that down and then after that I went in with my um, pen. It is waterproof, so is the ink that I used. And I'm going to redraw in those lines. Now, I got lucky because they weren't completely missing, so I definitely had a guide to follow. Um, if you don't have a guide to follow, just do the best you can. Um, you could also try relining re up the stamp. I didn't think that it was necessary. Once I had that done, I did go back in with my uh, brush markers and put down more color, rewater color those like areas to just blend them in. And ultimately, I don't think that you're going to be able to tell that there was an issue. Do I know what happened? 
I have no idea what happened. Um, over the years that I've used the purple tape or washi tape, I have had one or two issues like this. It's very rare for me, um, which is why I keep using it. My guess would be, um, I thought that the paper was completely dry because it had been, um, you know, maybe like a half an hour since I had watercolored it. But there is a possibility that maybe it was still damp underneath and I didn't realize it and it caused the glue to like seriously adhere to the watercolor paper. Or maybe because I cut them at the same time I cut the words there was more pressure than there is normally which caused the tape to adhere more than usual. I'm not sure. These are all just suspicions on my part. What I do know is that it ripped my pretty little roses and I had to go in and fix them. But it is doable so don't get so discouraged that you just give up like we can we can make it work we can fix it um so here i've trimmed that down i'm going to go ahead and glue that onto the white card base i just felt like it tied in everything better having that little white border there i am going to um, glue the little white um, script words onto the shadow dies um i pretty much chose the black and white I, it's kind of like my go-to but because I already had the black outline with the flowers um, I felt like the black and white made the most sense I toyed around a little bit with doing gray uh, as the shadow color and I think if I had done maybe a no line coloring look gray would have been really pretty but because I already have that bold black outline um, I was trying to tie all of it in together so the other way that we're going to kind of make this look a little better is the area that it ripped where I told, remember I told you I was not quite so lucky with the stem portion of it. Um, in case anybody would notice that maybe it looked a little wonky, I am going to adhere my sentiment directly over that portion so nobody's going to see it anyway. They'll just look at the really pretty, you know, colored roses. Um, and the you know super bold sentiment and won't notice that maybe there was um some just slightly off texture kind of situation underneath where the stems are so i'm popping these up on foam and then i'm going to with the sentiment i'm going to adhere them right over top of that so the middle portion will be glued and then i'll put two foam pieces on on each end of the word adore so that it sits flush and then on like the OU of the U um, and then the Y portion will be glued flat so everything lays nicely. Um, yeah this was uh, super fun to do because I got to play with some new products uh, and I love these flowers you guys know I love flowers um, and so I was I really was ultimately happy with the way that they looked. You'll have to let me know what you guys think if you have them or if you're interested in getting them. Uh, don't forget, um, like I said, Honeybee is having a sale that 15% off will come directly off your cart. There'll be a link below if you're watching on YouTube. If you're watching on uh, my channel, it is an affiliate and I appreciate your support. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything extra to support me and to support Honeybee. Um, and... Yeah, so we're going to put some rhinestones on this bad boy uh, from the Basics collection. This is kind of like my go-to. You can see how many you're missing. I use them on everything uh, and I need to buy more. Um, and then I did go over the flowers. It's really hard to see and honestly, like you can see it in real life, but it was hard to see in the pictures as well. I took my um, clear glitter pen and went over the um, roses and then the purplish blue flowers um, but it didn't really pick it up so great on the camera not really sure why but um, that's it that's pretty much the entire card so I hope you guys learned a little something I hope that you found yourself inspired to create uh, thank you guys so much for joining me and I'll catch you on the next video bye